On the eve of President Biden's historic visit, a reminder of sectarian tensions in Northern Ireland. Petrol bombs were thrown at police during a march by dissident Republicans as the province marks the anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. Also tonight. With just hours to go till junior doctors walk out, NHS leaders warn the public to avoid risky behavior. China flexes its military muscle over Taiwan, insisting it's ready to fight. And... Oh, it's come here to Mullen! Oh, they've got in front again! A Hollywood ending for Wrexham in their bid to return to the Football League. This is ITV News with Romilly Weeks. Good evening. There's now less than 24 hours until President Biden touches down in Belfast for an historic visit to mark 25 years since the Good Friday Agreement brought peace to Northern Ireland. But today, on the anniversary itself of that US brokered deal, there was a fresh reminder of how fragile the political situation remains. Petrol bombs were thrown in Londonderry, police once again the targets after a march by dissident Republicans. Our senior international correspondent John Irvine reports. There was a lot of Northern Ireland's history marked today. These are Protestant apprentice boys of Derry marching in mid-Ulster to commemorate the defence of the city in 1689. Before the Good Friday Agreement, such parades could lead to trouble. This took place in a constituency that has a Sinn Féin MP. But peace has cooled things down and there's a lot more compromise about these days. Oh, hey, come on, the shot, hey. On the other side of the sectarian divide, these are Republicans strutting their stuff through Derry's Cregan estate to celebrate the Easter Rising of 1916. These are the masked public faces of the dissident group that shot dead a journalist here four years ago and tried to murder a police officer in February. These people are the reason that MI5 has upped the terrorist threat level here to severe. They had petrol bombs ready, and although by and large the police gave them a wide berth, one Land Rover was attacked after it approached so officers could formally declare the parade illegal. Later, their march took them to a cemetery where they honoured dead IRA members of the past. Afterwards, they retrieved more petrol bombs and went looking for trouble, which the police denied them by backing off completely. They took out their frustration by setting up small, burning barricades. If today was some sort of barometer regarding the support enjoyed by Republican dissidents, well, the numbers were small and they'll be disappointed. But groups like the new IRA remain dangerous and the police service of Northern Ireland is greatly concerned about the potential for a terrorist attack this week. The rigmarole is almost complete ahead of President Biden's expected arrival in Belfast tomorrow. He's visiting a province that over the last 25 years has come on leaps and bounds but isn't yet entirely at peace with itself. John Irvine, ITV News, Northern Ireland. And Carl Dinan is at Stormont tonight, where the power-sharing government remains suspended. Carl, how much should we read into the fact that the president's itinerary doesn't include a stop there? Well, Romilly, the White House clearly thought it didn't make sense for President Biden to come and address an assembly that isn't actually sitting. The political reality is as well, though, that he is closely associated with nationalism himself and isn't a voice that unionists will readily listen to, although some of them tell me they wish he would make a bit more of an effort to see 
their perspective. Uh, but it is still a presidential visit, although he's only coming for 24 hours. There is still intense security all around Belfast city center uh, tonight, where uh, it's expected that in 24 hours it, he, he and some of his party will be staying. Um, and a presidential visit is still a big deal. And of course, it's happening because of the anniversary, the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, the agreement that was signed just around the corner here, the agreement that cemented the peace. And that means that even when there is political stalemate, the kind of street violence that John Irvine was just reporting on hasn't been able to spark a wider conflict of the sort that we knew for so long before the Good Friday Agreement. Carl at Stormont, thank you. NHS leaders have warned people to avoid risky behaviour that could see them end up in A&E ahead of what's expected to be the most disruptive strikes ever by junior doctors. Walkouts at English hospitals begin at 7am tomorrow morning and last until Saturday. Doctors' unions argue they need a 35% pay increase to make up for 15 years of real terms cuts. Martha Fairley reports. This week's four-day strike by junior doctors in England could be the most disruptive in the history of the NHS, affecting hundreds of thousands of patients. 16-year-old Rhys McIntyre's had his operation for scoliosis of the spine cancelled three times since last September. It's just hard. My mental health is getting worse. Um, I'm getting panic attacks um, at school a lot, very often, and it's very, very hard. His mum fears another round of strikes will only prolong his suffering. I know I get the reason why they want to strike, but there's got to be a different way, because striking on so many dates, so there's three dates that they striked on, um, and my son's operation didn't go ahead, they can sleep at night, he can't, so it's, it's just not fair. Junior doctors in England will walk out at 6.59 tomorrow morning for 96 hours. A three-day strike last month resulted in 175,000 appointments and operations cancelled. This strike could see 350,000 cancellations. The British Medical Association's calling for a 35% pay rise. Junior doctors say striking was a last resort. We can only apologise to patients whose care will be disrupted. But um, over the, the long term, what we've seen is year upon year, things getting worse and worse. And we know that it's only going to go in one direction if we don't take a stand like this at the moment. The government says doctors' demands are unrealistic, while NHS bosses fear patient safety may be put at risk if services are overwhelmed. If you have a worry, then there is 111, there's the NHS uh, website, uh, there's your GP. Don't go to A&E unless you really need to and yes as we would say to people at all times try to avoid you know risky behavior because you know the health service is not going to be able to provide the level of care that it wants to over the next few days with the government and junior doctors unions giving no ground in this dispute both sides are being urged to turn to the conciliation service acas to avoid further strikes putting even more pressure on the nhs martha fairley itv news China's military has declared it is ready to fight after military drills that saw its Navy and Air Force completely surround Taiwan. Beijing has completed three days of exercises, apparently in response to the decision of the U.S. House Speaker to meet the Taiwanese president in California. Tonight, the U.S. is preparing for its largest ever military drills in the disputed South China Sea, just 180 miles south of Taiwan. Chloe Keedy reports. In the skies surrounding the island of Taiwan, this pilot is carrying out a military drill and his presence is carrying a message from China to the rest of the world. This was the end of a three-day campaign by air, sea and land, which saw China encircle its island neighbour just to show that it could, even simulating missile attacks on Taiwanese cities. 
After the long flight, we arrived at the attack position, locked on the targets and carried out simulated strikes, testing the destruction capability of the joint combat system. China launched the exercises on Saturday, hours after Taiwan's president returned from the United States and a meeting with the House Speaker. Beijing objects to any international support of Taiwan, which it considers to be a Chinese province. Taiwan rejects that claim, and today the White House said it was watching China's movements closely. They appear to be a reaction to something that didn't need to be reacted to in my previous answer. This is not uncommon for presidents of Taiwan, and this one in particular, to transit the United States. So there was no reason to react in any way, militarily or otherwise. They also reacted uh, rhetorically. China's military drills may be over for now, but its mission against Taiwanese independence is not. Chloe Keedy, ITV News. The mother of two British-Israeli sisters killed in the occupied West Bank has died from her injuries. Lucy Dee has been in a coma since Friday when the car she was in with her daughters was shot at by a suspected Palestinian gunman. 20-year-old Maya and 15-year-old Dina were buried yesterday. The Dalai Lama has apologised after a video emerged of him briefly kissing a young boy on the lips. The Tibetan spiritual leader could then be heard asking the boy to suck his tongue. The incident happened at a public gathering in India in February. And Joe Biden has used the White House's annual Easter egg roll to drop another very strong hint that he plans to run for re-election in next year's US presidential race. However, the 80-year-old told reporters he isn't ready to make an official announcement. To football, and arguably the biggest match in non-league football history was also a star-studded occasion in North Wales today. Wrexham and their film star owners took on Notts County with both teams breaking records at the top of the National League. Only one of the two can gain automatic promotion. And as Chris Scudder reports, they played out a dramatic match in the best Hollywood tradition. A showdown between two of the oldest clubs in world football. Pioneers so old, black and white silent movies were still decades away. Yet here in glorious Technicolor were modern Wrexham led by Hollywood movie stars Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. And this was set up like a film script. It's Bostock. Oh! It's absolutely brilliant. And it was the world's oldest club, Notts County with a free kick for the ages to get their noses in front and put a few noses in the Wrexham stands out of joint. But the long faces didn't last. On Mullins in, and he scores! Star striker Paul Mullins' 44th goal of the season, surely Wrexham's new leading man. You could sense which way this one was heading, and they scored again. Cute delirium and some very excited stars in the stands. But we were far from done. Notts County equalised. Notts County have levelled it! Only for Wrexham to throw in another plot twist with goal number three. Got in front again! Surely that was that. But no, a handball deep in stoppage time and Notts County had a chance to save the day. Notts County it really was Hollywood drama and former England goalkeeper Ben Foster was the Welsh club's hero. Take a bow, Messrs McElhenney and Reynolds. After 15 years out of the Football League, their newly beloved Wrexham are on their way back. Chris Scudder, ITV News. And that is it for tonight. Goodbye.